What's up, guys? Today, we are doing the last episode of this series. We are going to recreate the opening shot of the TV show, Sherlock. <laughs> Curiously, the series begins with a shot of Watson, the secondary protagonist of this story. And what I like about this shot is that the hard lighting and the setting really go well with the idea that he's dealing with PTSD. The sequence of shots happens quite fast. First, we start with a macro shot of our protagonist, and then we cut to a shot from above as he quickly rises from the bed. Then we have a close-up shot from the side that seems to be done handheld and that has this blurred effect on the edges of the frame. And finally, we have another shot from above which lets us see the lines cutting across a protagonist's face and body while the camera is slowly sliding. I'll be honest with you, I thought the setup for this shot was going to be much simpler than it was. Let's take a look at how we did it. I knew that I wanted my close-up shot to have the wall in the background be the green wall in the room because that was going to give me the closest look to the original. But in order to do that, I needed to rearrange the position of everything in the room. First, we moved the bed, but that meant that the window was going to be above our actor's head, which meant the direction of the light was not going to match. I don't know if this matters to you at all, but they're gonna cover this window and the light is gonna come from over here. So I blacked out the windows and added a Forza 500 to recreate the window light. Now this is where things started to get a little bit tricky to recreate the pattern on the bed. We took a small frame and we attached pieces of gaffer tape to it so that we could create shadows on the bed. Um, and you can actually see a copy of our shot list. That's what happens when you're on set. Sometimes you get really creative and you just find the strangest ways to make it happen. Once we started setting up for the macro shot, we noticed that we needed a bit of an eye light. And so we brought in a pablo tube that we placed pieces of gaffer tape at different parts of so that we could break the light down a little bit. And then we shine it at just the right angle to get that eye light in the actor's eye. For the overhead shot, we came up with this really crazy rig to get it done. We extended a slider all the way, and then we put it on top of two C-stands that were on either side of the bed. And then we attached a gobo head on the slider so that we could put a gobo arm through that. And then at the end of the gobo arm, we screwed on a Manfrotto head where we placed our camera. To add the cherry on top, we used the Forza 300 ballast as the counterweight for our crazy rig. To try and recreate the blurred edges in the close-up shot, I put a piece of plastic wrap on the front of the lens with a hair tie, and then I dabbed a little bit of Vaseline on that. Oh, uh, wait, oh, uh, wait. Too much? <laughs> yeah, I think it went too much. Yeah. Let's take a look at the final result. All right, hold up. Don't tune out yet because this is the last episode of the series and so we're doing something a little bit different. On any project, there's always a constant battle between the production team and the creative team. The production team is obviously looking after the budget to make sure that the project can happen, but the creative team wants to deliver the best result. So I invited our producer for this project, Lucia, so she can talk a little bit about that. Here comes the party pooper. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge for our project was small budget, but Hollywood quality. And I want to ask what you think is Hollywood quality. I think for me, Hollywood quality used to mean explosions, uh, famous actors, stunts, uh, crazy special effects. Although these are true, but I think what comes down to the essence of it is high impact. And most of the time, memorable shots in movies, TV shows, etc., happen at the beginning because they're trying to draw you in. So once we settled on doing opening shots, then we could figure out how to make it happen. So once you receive the initial budget, how do you break that down and prioritize? I think the single biggest element that could affect a budget of a project is, is really time. So one more filming day means 
more rental costs, means more crew cost. Uh, after calculation, uh, I've arrived at the number and say three filming day was the maximum that we can do. So initially what I did is I broke down the 10 episodes into three different categories, which were indoor shooting, outdoor shooting, and then the special location, which was the pool. I then took the indoor shots and then I broke them down even further. And so it was an indoor Airbnb shots than the air indoor studio shots. And I remember we had to spend more time scouting and going back and forth to make sure all these locations can fit very, very nicely into that three filming days. I think the main takeaway in this is the idea of economy of scale. Right. So an economy of scale is when you can share what we call a sunk cost. What is a sunk cost? Essentially when you rent a location for the whole day, regardless if you use it for an hour or 10 hours, that's already like sunk cost. So for example, for our Airbnb rental, that was about 800 USD in total. If you only shoot one episode in there, the rental cost is still gonna be 800. But if you can shoot five episodes as what we did, then you have a shared cost of 200 USD per episode on location, which is not that bad really. And the same happens for every other expense. So for example, our department heads, our equipment, um, our grip, our gaffer, the rest of the crew, um, arts and props, all of that gets divided across all of these different episodes. And so that allows us to save considerably on the budget. I want to give a huge shout out for Nelai for making this project happen. And hopefully you guys will see us again on this channel very soon. But never forget, may the Forza be with you. So quirky, man. <laughs>